Deep inside the Great Pyramid, the biggest mystery of all, a secret shaft unexplored. Will it lead to a chamber? And what might we find? A secret door? Maybe even clues to the treasures of a pharaoh whose body has never been found. Tonight, a custom-built robot searches for the answer and solves the mystery of the secret shaft. This is the entrance to the Great Pyramid. It's not the original one. That was blocked off after they buried the pharaoh. Now this tunnel was cut through the stone about a thousand years ago and eventually it leads to what's believed to be Khufu's burial chamber. But to reach the chamber where our team are busy working, I'm going to have to make my way through a series of tunnels and shafts right through the very heart of the pyramid. I'm just about reaching the first one. I'm going to make it up these uh, steep stone steps to where the team is working on solving the mystery of the secret shaft. This mystery was first explored in 1992 when a German robot designed by Rudolf Gantenbrink probed the 8-inch square passageway with a camera. About 200 feet up into the shaft, the German team was stunned by what they saw. The shaft was blocked. The stone didn't look like a cave-in. It seemed to be custom cut to block the shaft. But why? Were the Egyptians trying to protect something? Could it lead somewhere? And what were those things that looked like handles? Could this be a door? Fascinated by this mysterious shaft and stone, Dr. Zahi Hawass, head of antiquities for Egypt and a National Geographic explorer in residence, had a dream of looking past it. I've been waiting for this all my life. <laughs> from the National Geographic Society, a custom-built pyramid rover was commissioned just for the job. It's an ingenious device that can carry a range of tools and cameras. The electric motor drives two sets of treads, top and bottom, for added traction. It can also expand and contract depending on the height of the shaft. For weeks, the team has been exploring the shaft with the high-tech robot. It's well armed for the job, but it won't be easy. The stone's 200 feet up an extremely steep shaft, and getting there is only part of the battle. A battle indeed. Well, that's the first part of the journey done. I'm a bit out of breath. I've just made it 120 feet up these steep steps here. But, you know, it was worth it because I'm now right inside the heart of the Great Pyramid. I'm standing in what's known as the Grand Gallery. You can see this impressive high stone ceiling here. And the staircases on either side of that gallery lead to the place where they found Khufu's sarcophagus. It's what's known as the King's Burial Chamber. But I'm not going in there. I'm going to head down this tunnel you can see behind me to what's called the Queen's Chamber. Now, it's called the Queen's Chamber, but Khufu's queen was never actually buried here, so we don't really know what it's for. That's just one of the mysteries that we're hoping to solve tonight. I'm about 50 feet away from the chamber, but I'm already 300 feet inside this massive stone structure. You know, there's about 5 million tons of stone surrounding me, completely surrounded by stone, as you can see. Now, we've got to stagger carefully through this tunnel me and the cameraman, and uh, when we get to the end, we're going to find the team of archaeologists and scientists who are waiting until we arrive to launch that specially designed, custom-built robot rover up the southern shaft of the chamber. Before we meet them, though, I want to introduce you to a very important man. He's the guy who runs this place, the director of the pyramids, and in fact, Egypt's leading archaeologist, Lola. Dr. Zahi Hawass. How you. great to see you. Welcome to my beautiful country, Egypt. Thank you pyramids. very much. It's wonderful. A bit of a struggle getting here, but we're working, of course. We're inside the Queen's Chamber, and I want to go straight over here Just to where our roboteers. I would like you to see that this is the robot. This is very impressive. This is the business end of solving the mystery. This isn't is it? what's going to make the adventure tonight. But look, that is the camera that's going through the door and it will take the photograph to see what's behind the door that will capture the hearts of everyone. We all can't wait for that. So we're going to set this on its way now? 
and it will walk within that small door. And that's the reason that we are sending the robot, not you, Laura. Now, a lot of design has gone into this robot, I know. We'll be learning a little bit more about that later on. It's got to fit inside this, what, seven or eight square inches there of a tunnel. Tell us what's going to happen as the robot makes its way up the shaft. What's going to happen, uh, the robot will, find, will reveal the mystery. And uh, it will walk within that shaft. And it will uh, show to us for the first time the interior of the pyramid. And it will reveal the mystery that we are going to reveal tonight to everyone. I mean, revealing mysteries is obviously just, you know, it's a fun exercise anyway, but this is a serious scientific investigation, isn't yes, it? Yes, the first time actually that you have a high tech the robot uh, working with us archaeology. It's sort of 21st century technology figuring out 45. 4,500 years ago, the most important of monument in the world. It's incredible. Yes. One question I have to ask you, Zani, because okay. people at home are going to wonder. Has anyone had a peek? No. But I have some ideas. We'll talk about it tonight. And there it is, the Great Pyramid. We are actually inside it, of course, about halfway up in a place called the Queen's Chamber. Now, the Pyramid Rover is now about three quarters of the way up the secret shaft. That's about 180 feet. The Pyramid Rover is cleverly divided into two parts. The front looks like a miniature tank. This is the powerhouse. It's designed to crawl up the steep 40 degree shaft, dragging its brains behind it in a kind of black box jammed with electronics. The rover has five tiny digital cameras for steering and for sending back detailed pictures of the shaft and stone. Team leader Mike Bassett hasn't quite mastered driving via remote control. It's a matter of going to the tractor trailer school for a couple of days. <laughs> but he quickly gets the hang of it and cruises up the shaft at a dizzying five feet per minute. Finally, after traveling nearly 180 feet, at last they could see the blocking stone. That's the door. Look, you can see yeah. the tabs. Look at that. But reaching it was going to be difficult. Right in front of the robot was a step, only two inches high. But to a six-inch rover, that's a major climb. So, oh, we're still getting a lot of slip. It's a very high step. It's an uneven step. It's at an odd angle. It's very difficult for me to steer and get traction. No matter what they did, the rover just couldn't get over. After two days, multiple adjustments and several tries, they finally made it. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So. But then something went wrong. Okay, we're coming down. The robot fell nearly 180 feet. The project looked like it was over. But amazingly, the rover survived almost intact, and they found the cause of the failure. A metal pin snapped, the tracks released their grip on the walls, and the robot plunged. The next day, with a new pin and a little adjustment, the rover climbed over the step without a hitch. Minutes later, Zahi gets his first good look at the stone with its intriguing copper handles. Look at how smooth the stone is. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's very smooth. That's a beautiful picture. These are the most detailed images ever, and already they've been able to make a tantalizing discovery. So from this chip at the bottom corner, you can see the shadows and you can see very clearly that this stone is sitting in a vertical groove in the side wall. And that's uh, very good news because that is what you would do if this were actually a door that was slid into the place from above. Then remote sensing expert Meg Waters notices a curious substance in front of the stone. What, what do you think it is? I think it may be mortar. I think it's actually really it's key. Exactly it's the intentional. The mortar that exists underneath that slab, it shows that this is a space. I think, I'm sure, that this is a movable stone. 
and then push it there. It may have been movable when they set it, but mortar would have locked it in place. That may mean the only way to see past the stone is to drill a tiny peephole for a camera. To prepare for that, the team will have to modify the robot back in Boston. Learning new details about the stone has only whetted everyone's appetite to see behind it. Well, the team returned to the Great Pyramid just two weeks ago with a new robot, and they called it Pyramid Rover 2.0. One of the most promising innovations was a ramp to get over the step. It won't stay in the shaft for eternity. It'll be easily retrieved at the end of the investigation. Let's do it. The team wanted to find out as much as possible about the stone. Was it a door? Did it move? Or was it a big solid block? Most of all, they wanted to see past it, but only if they could minimize the damage to the stone. They'd already tried to look through every existing seam and crack, like the one in the corner, but none opened to the other side. Okay. On this trip, the robot was carrying a device to measure the thickness of the stone. Okay. To get an accurate reading, the rover had to push with as much as 40 pounds of force. Firing. Adjust some way up. Resetting. So while it was reading the fitness, it was also seeing if the stone would move. No signal. But it didn't budge. Setting. Then, some amazing news. The measuring device indicated that the stone was only about three inches thick. So maybe drilling a small peephole in the stone was now an option. But Zahi was unsure. What's important for me is the safety of the pyramid. If it's not going to be safe, I will never agree. At all. So the team built a mock-up of the shaft and stone and started test drilling. In less than 25 seconds, the robot had put a clean hole straight through the stone, just big enough for a tiny camera and light to fit through it. Still wary, the team tried making holes in different kinds of stone. Some weathered like the pyramid stone, some in even worse condition. Every hole was clean with no chips or fractures. Finally, Dr. Hawass decided to go ahead. Armed with a drill, the robot moved up the shaft for its most important mission so far. It was 6 a.m. and the end of a 24-hour shift. Everyone was there to watch this historic moment. They knew they had to get it right. A perfect hole and no damage to the stone. Well, we've just heard about that ramp. Now let's see if the robot can make it over it and see if it works. Let's have a look. The robot, as you can see, is just approaching that ramp. Greg is one of our roboteers. How do you think it's doing? Um, it seems to be doing well. There's actually a significant amount of effort that went into the design of the ramp, including um, evaluating video data from previous missions and building a model of that particular step. Well, hard work, and it seems to have worked. The robots made it over the ramp, so there's only one thing left to do now, and that's put the camera through and see what's on the other side. We're not quite there yet, about 10 feet to go, so stay with us. The mystery of the secret shaft remains as tantalizing as ever. We're back inside the Queen's Chamber. This really is the moment of truth, isn't it, Zahi? What we've all been waiting for, the camera is now lined up against that three-quarters of an inch hole in the stone door. We are now going to follow its progress through the hole with that camera there, and we're going to find out <coughs> if and what is behind that stone door. Let's have a look at what's happening. Let's see. Okay, the lights are on. You can see the camera making its steady progress towards the hole there. Now, Zahi, talk us through what's happening. Just the camera is getting in the hole now, but I can't see anything. Okay. Now, oh my goodness, look at that. <gasps> What's We're this? hearing shrieks inside here. I've got to tell you, this team of archaeologists has been waiting for this moment for months and months. This is incredibly exciting. What are we seeing, Zahi? We, we can see another sealed door. Another sealed door? Yeah. And what are these markings on the door? There seems it's to be just, black marks, or is that a crack? It's cracks. It's cracks. 
Wow. In another sealed door. And oh that goodness. is, it's another space, another sealed door, but it looks to me we have a discovery. Another discovery. Now, and can we see anything on the floor there? What's happening here? It looks like that, as you say, is a door, I mean, not a dead end. It is, it? it is. Some, look at this hole underneath. Yes. That really is also. Just what you can see. Looks to me that sealing something. We are here in front of a discovery. This is incredible. And I am really happy that we got this. We found a space we found another sealed chamber. This is incredible. This is the first time a space has been it found is within the Great Pyramid within, what, 130 years? I know, but Laura, this is very important. This <laughs> is something I'm very proud that finally we revealed the first mystery of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. The question is, what happens next? Next, we'll study this. We'll find out how can we reveal more secrets of the pyramids. But this is very important that what we are showing now, it shows the amazing, those people, the great Egyptians. Do we have any idea what that door might be for? Why there would be two we, doors? Uh, this is, I do not know, but it seems there is something <laughs> important is hidden here. Obviously, the investigation is going to have to continue, it, and you know, we'll it, be bringing you more information as National Geographic finds it out, but wow, we're actually going to have to say goodbye now from the Queen's Chamber. Laura, good luck. You did a good job. Thank you, you too. Congratulations. We're handing, handing back over to Jay. Bye-bye.